here at Team Triple Jump are big fans of music in all of its forms. In fact, every now and then we break out the recorder, the kazoo and the triangle and have an impromptu jam session. The office hoedowns have become quite legendary, let me tell you that. Sometimes though, they're not enough. And we wonder what it might be like to be a world famous musician, to step into the shoes of a well-known performer and live a life of concerts and showbiz. Well, video games have opened the door of opportunity once again, because there are quite a few games out there that enable us to live that dream. It's not all plain sailing though, and between demon armies, evil martial arts masters and paramilitary groups, these beloved musicians seem to have the odds stacked against them. Still, with talent, skill and good publicity, they're sure to win the day. For this video, we've assembled a group of video games in which one or more famous musicians take centre stage. Whether you're into rap, rock, pop or blues, you should find something here that will suit your taste. And if not, well, it's always nice to look at some curious games of yesteryear, whether they're musical in origin or not. I'm Ashton from Triple Jump, and here are 10 games where you can play as a famous musician. Number 10. Journey Escape You're probably familiar with the band Journey. If the name doesn't ring a bell though, they're the group of experienced rockers responsible for that Don't Stop Believing song. In 1981, they released an album called Escape, which featured the aforementioned track as well as a number of other epic rock hits. And the cover of the album depicted a cool beetle looking craft bursting out of a shattering sphere. In 1982, a developer called Data Age released a game called Journey Escape on the Atari 2600, which tasked players with leading the band to the aforementioned craft known as the Scarab Escape Vehicle. What are the band escaping from? Well, intrusive photographers, shifty promoters and amorous groupies, of course. Band members always want to escape from those things, didn't you know? Honestly, the game wasn't really up to much, amounting to a series of auto-scrolling identical looking stages where formations of groupies, barriers and other such obstacles had to be sidestepped in order to get the band to the cool scarab craft, which didn't look anything like its snazzy album art counterpart. In the end, the only journey you'd be interested in after playing this one is the journey to the shops to get a better game. Number 9. Rap Jam Volume 1 Things can probably get pretty heated and stressful in one of those recording studios. After all, cranking out hits can't be easy, and there are undoubtedly times where the performer needs a break from all those killer rhymes and sick beats. In 1995, an SNES game was released in North America that depicted a smattering of hip-hop stars taking such a break from recording in order to play a bit of basketball. Unfortunately, it seems things have gotten a bit heated out on the court too, as these guys don't appear to be playing fair. Presenting exhibition and tournament basketball modes, and emitting inconvenient trifles like foul calls, Rap Jam Volume 1 features a number of classic hip-hop and rap artists and presents multiplayer basketball gameplay across various urban locations. Some of the legendary performers available include Coolio, LL Cool J and Queen Latifah, as well as members of top rap groups like House of Pain and Public Enemy. If the idea of these performers playing basketball on nighttime street courts appeals to you, you're probably wondering if the game is any good. Well, let's put it this way, do you see a Rap Jam Volume 2? No? Well, that should go some way to answering your question. Number 8. Wu-Tang Shaolin Style One hip-hop group who were around for Rap Jam Volume 1 but were omitted from its roster is the Wu-Tang Clan. This 10-strong group were probably okay with it though, considering the game's quality. But that didn't stop them from making their own jump into the video gaming world in 1999. Wu-Tang Shaolin Style, known as Wu-Tang Taste the Pain in PAL regions, was a PS1 fighting game with a distinct martial arts theme and lots of weapon-based combat. Players pick their favourite clan member and engage in a deadly fighting tournament, with a mystical story of betrayal providing a backdrop for the violence. Featuring some extensive cutscenes and a code that must be used to unlock the full blood and gore present in the game, Wu-Tang Shaolin Style had more than a little Mortal Kombat about it. While bad guy, Mong Shu's, attempt to discover the secret art of Wu-Tang doesn't really hold the same gravitas as Shao Kahn trying to subjugate the Earth Realm, Wu-Tang Shaolin Style got a decent response from many critics who cited it as an example of a license to used well. Basically, if you'd rather play as Inspector Deck and Dirty Old Bastard than Liu Kang and Sub-Zero, then this one will take you to excessively violent hip-hop heaven. Number 7. Boo Jingai 
Officially released for the PS2 in 2003, Japanese hack and slash adventure Bujingai, known as Bujingai the Forsaken City in America and Bujingai Swordmaster in Europe, is set in a distant future where the Earth is in ruins and many of its remaining population have found themselves in possession of mystical powers. Players take on the role of Lao, a swordsman and wielder of said powers. This enigmatic hero is quite the showman, and is able to fight off hordes of demons in his attempt to save the city of Bujingai. Players stepping into the stylish shoes of this mysterious and strangely charismatic hero will be expected to pull off a thousand hit combos on a regular basis in over-the-top swashbuckling action. What does any of this have to do with famous musicians though? Well, the flamboyant Lao is modelled on the likeness of Japanese music industry superstar Gact. Known also for his film and TV acting roles and writing and directing dalliances, Gact, real name Gakuto Oshiro, is quite the celebrity in his native Japan, and has something of a worldwide presence too. However, while Gact Act is certainly a multi-talented fellow, as far as we're aware, his real life abilities don't extend to demon slaying and unassisted space travel. You never know though. Number 6. The Blues Brothers Though perhaps better known nowadays for a couple of Hollywood movies, at least one of which was very good, the Blues Brothers were originally a band formed by comedians Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi, who debuted in 1978 on American sketch comedy show Saturday Night Live. Backed by various distinguished musicians, the two comedians provided vocals, performance and personality, and the band released multiple albums and toured all over the United States. They also had a couple of games made about them too. The Blues Brothers was originally released on multiple formats from 1990 onwards and featured the titular brothers in box throwing vinyl collecting platformer action. Players can choose either of the brothers, or both at once if you have a friend or sibling to play with, and the adventure culminated in a gig where the boys would bust their impressive moves. The Blues Brothers Jukebox Adventure was released later for the PC, SNES and Game Boy, and featured more of the same, except the brothers are stuck in some kind of mystical land that appears to exist inside a giant jukebox, and they use vinyl records as projectiles. Careful guys! Don't you know how valuable they'll be one day? Number 5, 50 Cent Bulletproof and 50 Cent Blood on the Sand In 2005, Curtis James Jackson III, also known as 50 Cent, had not long since burst onto the hip-hop scene, and was riding a wave of fame. Continuing the grand tradition of rap and hip-hop artists who wanted to appear in their own video games, Mr. Scent starred in PS2 and Xbox title 50 Cent Bulletproof, a third-person action shooter in which the titular rapper takes revenge on a group of hitmen who tried to take him down. Likely inspired by a real-life assassination attempt, the game's story is narrated by the man himself, and features a soundtrack of previously unreleased hits. Despite all this, it didn't impress critics, who cited wonky controls and bullet sponge enemies as a reason to avoid this hip-hop adventure. Far better received was the sequel, 50 Cent Blood on the Sand for PS3 and 360. This time, the roving rapper finds himself in the Middle East, fighting a terrorist paramilitary group for a diamond and pearl encrusted skull, and the game embraced its nonsensical premise, adding over-the-top action and taking itself far less seriously. Alas, it performed poorly at retail, meaning that the completion of the 50 Cent video game trilogy is unlikely. Devastating, I know, but some things just weren't meant to be. Number 4. In Sync Get to the Show a slight genre shift now, as we step into the pristine, clean-cut world of American boy band In Sync. Formed in 1995, this quintet of crooners enjoyed huge success with hit singles like Bye Bye Bye, which, surprisingly, is about saying goodbye to someone. All this musical success is all well and good, but what if you wanted to play as Justin Timberlake and Friends in video game form? Well, Infogram's published Game Boy Color title, In Sync Get to the Show, might be just what you're after. In order to get the titular band to the titular show, players will be driving limos, keeping noisy neighbours quiet in the hotel, and even helping the guys relax with a spot of hacky sack. In a way, In Sync Get to the Show doesn't actually qualify for this list, as you take on the role of the band's personal assistant rather than its members. However, certain minigames put you in direct control of the guys, so we think it counts. An example of this is the Burger Stacking Challenge, in which you control the likes of Lance Bass and Joey Fatone as they desperately try to attempt to catch or avoid falling meats, sauces and salads according to taste. You know lads, there are easier ways to make a burger, yeah? Number 3, Guitar Hero Metallica, Guitar Hero Aerosmith, Guitar Hero Van Halen, The Beatles Rock Band, and Green Day Rock Band. 
Whether you're wearing your fingers to the bone on Through the Fire and Flames with Guitar Hero, or indulging in some classics in the Rock Band series, you'll generally find that you're playing as a fictional pre-made rocker or your own created character, and taking on well-known songs as you work your way up through a progressively tougher setlist. The band-specific games, however, give you the chance to step into the shoes of your favourite rock deities and be the real thing, rather than a tribute act. There are five band-centric titles across the Guitar Hero and Rock Band brands, so if you want to pump out some machine gun riffs with Metallica, facilitate stadiums of swaying fans with Aerosmith, get things a bit more punky with Green Day, relive the Cavern Club legend with the Beatles, or just jump into a Van Halen set, you're totally covered. Oh, and if none of that gets your toe tapping, you could try playing as the adorable blocky version of the likes of Brian May and Graham Coxon in Lego Rock Band. See, there really is something for everyone. Number 2. The Def Jam Series Further cementing hip-hop and rap status as the most represented musical genre in video games, we have the Def Jam series. Kicking off with Def Jam Vendetta in 2003, this franchise brought violence and music together to form a very positive whole. Released on the PS2 and GameCube, Def Jam Vendetta was a wrestling game at heart and allowed players to control the likes of Method Man and Ludacris in gritty underground grappling matches. 2004's Def Jam Fight for NY added some different fighting styles into the mix and threw in some additional famous faces, like Snoop Dogg and Ice-T. This series later showed up on PS3 and 360 with 2007's Def Jam Icon, which moved even further away from its wrestling roots and added some subtle rhythm-based mechanics, where players could do more damage with throws and strikes they struck on the beat. Incidentally, the series stars a few artists that have already showed up in previous games on this list. Wu-Tang's Ghostface Killer, for example, made his debut in Shaolin style, and hardcore rapper Sticky Fingers of the group Onyx was previously seen shooting hoops in Rap Jam Volume 1. Seems a bit greedy, really. There are thousands of poor musicians who haven't been playable in even one game yet. And number one, Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Speaking of musicians who starred in more than one video game, let's round things off with the king of pop himself. In 1990, two years after the cinematic release of Michael Jackson's Moonwalker movie, a glut of games were released under the Michael Jackson's Moonwalker moniker. Probably the most well-known is the Mega Drive title, a platform adventure where players control the white-gloved icon and listen to chiptune versions of hits like Smooth Criminal and Billie Jean. Also developed and released by Sega was an arcade-exclusive isometrically scrolling beat-em-up, and then there are the home computer versions of the game, which feature top-down exploration sections as well as some side-scrolling shooting for good measure. Counting the various home computer ports as one title, that makes three separate games where Michael Jackson is a playable character, all with the same name. Talk about saturation, but then I guess it's to be expected from one of the most legendary performers of all time, who, judging by his rumoured musical involvement in a certain game and various guest appearances in others, definitely had an interest in the medium. Any more playable appearances though? Well, yes, actually. He was playable in 1999's Ready to Rumble Boxing Round 2. No, it doesn't make sense, but it's neat that he still wears one white glove, even in the boxing ring. 